Hey guys, what's going on? Carlos here with Danny Morel with On The Road To Success. Thank you so much, Danny, for your yeah, time. Man, man. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, guys, we literally just flew in from New York City, uh, and then we had to take a rental car and come all the way over here. It was about 100 miles, but we made it. <laughs> Where did you fly in? Um, San Diego International Airport. Oh, no? you, is the event over there? It's eight miles from there. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, that's why I flew in there. That's <laughs> that's nice, yeah. yeah, so, Danny Murrell, I know you're in real estate. I know you're also the founder of Relentless. Yeah, our event. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's exciting. I know you have a Hispanic background as well, so definitely relate. Yeah. But what's up, man? What's your story? I think that's what everybody wants to hear. <laughs> uh, what part of it? Well, uh, let's do before, before everything happened. Okay. Before you, quote unquote, became successful, kind of like you, you growing up and your parents. and. and yeah, that. so I think... Um, you know, I, I, I grew up, uh, great family, great support system, uh, grew up in New York City, uh, and, um, you know, everything was going perfect, and then when, by the time I was 13 years old, right at about 13, actually, I probably was about 11 or 12, my parents started having issues, and they decided to uh, divorce. And when they divorced, uh, my mother at the time had a sister, which is my aunt, who lived here in Southern California, and she moved... My mother just basically got up, moved uh, myself and my two brothers uh, over here to Southern California, and I got here when I was 13 years old. And um, that's where kind of like the journey began, mm -hmm. because you go from having two parents, all of a sudden one, right. and that one doesn't even have a job, because right. we're in a brand new area, so things got kind of tough. I know you, you had a goal. You had a big goal when you were young. I think you wanted to hit it by the time you were 25 or? 20, 21. 21, all right. In your early 20s, you had a big goal. And I can relate because I remember being young, you know, my parents are divorced as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, it didn't really hit me as hard when I was a kid. Yeah. I just kind of heard, you know, like one side talking about the other side. Yeah. So, but uh, my, my goal always helped me stay focused. And my goal was to become a professional baseball player. Oh, awesome. Right? What position? Uh, I was a pitcher. Left okay, handed cool. pitcher, okay. first baseman, off field, a little bit off field. Okay. But, you know, my goal always kept me straight, yeah. good grades and everything. How did that goal that you had for, you know, at 21 years old to help your parents out, how did that help you stay focused? So the goal was, you know, at the time we were living in a small two bedroom apartment. And, you know, obviously it was, it was, it was all my, my mother could afford at the time. So the goal for me was um, buy my mama house. Right? I wanted to get us a house. And I, I think we got to kind of take a couple steps backwards first to understand where that goal came from. Sure. Um, you know, the reality is, is that I was the oldest in the family. I essentially became an adult right when I was 13 years old because th there was no one else to kind of make things happen for us or lead us. Uh, my mother, God bless her, was very uh, timid in nature. She was very shy, very, just very timid in nature. And... You know, the reality is that um, uh, uh, society is rough out there, right? Yeah, and so if you is. want something to happen, and if, particularly if you want to be successful, timidity doesn't work that well. You need to be aggressive. You need to be assertive. You need to understand what you want. You need to understand what your vision is, and then you need to go out there and work hard for it, right? Well, well mom wasn't wired that way. And so, you know, when I looked around, I thought to myself, if I don't step up and make this happen, I don't know that we're ever going to get out of this situation. And I think that's like success principle number one for everybody. I think you have to come to the realization that you are where you are in life right now. I'm talking right now as you're watching this video. You are where you are in life because of your um, uh, surroundings, because of your background, because of your exposure, because of the people you've been surrounded with, because of what they taught you, because of their BS, because of their negative thinking, because the reality is human beings just pass all of that on to you as a child. And that's what happens and most people don't realize that. And you know, if I can be frank, in the Hispanic culture, I think it's a little bit tougher and a little bit worse, because I don't know about you, but I'm literally two generations away from my grandfather just uh, getting here for the first time, you know, to this country. So if you think about it, that's survival. Mode. Right. That's, that's survival. That's not I'm an entrepreneur. That's not the freedoms that you and I now have, the blessings that you and I have. That's survival, right? And so mom learns survival, right? So when she moves here to California, what do you think she's doing? Survive. There's no abundance. There's survival. Mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, luckily for me, I was wired a little bit differently where I thought to myself, you know, living in an apartment is great and all, but I want us to have a house, you know? And so I said, you know, I don't really know how I'm gonna do it. Step number two, don't worry about how it's gonna happen. You know, you just, you just get focused on what you want and let, let God answer the how, right? The right steps will come to you. You just gotta paint the picture in your mind and that's what I did. I would drive around the neighborhood and I would say, you know, this is the neighborhood. I picked the exact neighborhood and, uh, and then um, I said, by the time I'm 21, I'm gonna do it. And that's it. And I just threw the goal out there. I didn't know how it was gonna happen. I didn't even have money for it. I had just graduated high school, but that was the goal. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, it was a little different for me in terms of being the, the timid. My parents were not timid. My mom was very hardworking, my dad too, but my mom was more of like an entrepreneur. She has oh. her own, she, she owns a company uh, for school, a school bus. Okay. You know, she, she picks up kids, transports them, takes them, takes them home. And I was more of like the timid one. Uh -huh. I was like laid back, I was hardworking, but a good student, but more like calm, calm right. you yeah. know? It wasn't until I met, actually met my wife my wife actually, you know, and I'm not embarrassed to say, she actually made me who I am now. She made me it. like a man. I love it. And I learned so much uh, about her. She's actually right behind this camera, and I'm very grateful for her. Yeah. Uh, how has your marriage or your partner uh, played a role in your success? Cause I'm sure, you know, communication and different things had, had to fall into it. Yeah, so we just fast forwarded a lot of years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, so this, some of this started before you were to married. Well, well yeah, I okay. was, I, you know, at the time of the goal, I was 18 years old. Right. So then just so that you don't miss the whole story, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we got the house by the time I was 21. Uh, started selling real estate by the time I'm 27 years old, we went from zero to one and a half million a year in, in commissions. And then uh, the market kind of crashed on us, you know? Yeah. The economy crashed, I wasn't prepared for it. And I think if you were to ask me, that's where you know my wife played the biggest role. Um, she didn't give up on me, she stood by my side, she encouraged me, um, and quite frankly, she would hide some of the negative from me. Like when we couldn't afford food, like literally we lost everything, she wouldn't let me know. She would keep that from me, she would hide that from me to make sure that my psychology was still good while I was trying to rebuild the business. Totally understand. I, I had a meeting with David Meltzer well, actually, he says hi. Yeah. He told me to tell you hi. Yeah. Uh, David Meltzer, I met with him a few days ago and I asked him a similar question on how his partner, how can he relate his goals and stuff to his partner? He asked me, you know, the key, you said the key word is relate. Mm -hmm. So how do you make, uh, how do you relate things to your wife? Yeah, I think communication is the key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think communication is the key. I think that first and foremost, I set the tone, I set the vision. And um, when I set the tone and I set the vision, I understand that there's going to be sacrifice that needs to take place. And, uh, and, and you know, that's the life of an entrepreneur, quite, quite frankly. It, when, when you are an employee, there's not much sacrifice, there's sacrifice needed, but it's, everything is regimented and you're being told what to do and you just reply and you do it. As an entrepreneur, you have to make up what to do. You have to make up the right steps. You have to take the right direction. And then based off of all of those decisions, there's some sacrifice that needs to take place. I believe that as long as you stay in communication with your spouse and, and, and with your children, and let them know, you know, dad might not be around on, on, on Tuesday and Thursday nights, mm. but uh, he will be here on Wednesday and Friday nights. And you make them all a part of the vision, then I think that that's where there is healthy success within the family and everybody understands what the plan is basically it's all about communication danny i love your story i also seen you have a beautiful family i've seen the you know some of the pictures on social media instagram and you know some people will say you know yeah i want to own a business but i have kids yeah but i'm a single mom yeah but you know i'm i'm spanish i'm hispanic what would you say to those people that probably have some of those excuses and they can actually break through and hit their goal? Yeah, look, now we can get deep. Look, the, it's, it's never the excuse. It's never because you have kids. It's never because you're Hispanic or you're black or you're white or it's never that. It's the psychology behind that. It's the thinking behind that. There is actually a thinking of inferiority behind what the excuse says. 
Does, does that make sense? Exactly. Um, there's a thinking of feeling less than. Mm -hmm. There's a thinking of feeling inadequate. Maybe there's a self-love issue, you know? And that's what I'm telling you is that for most human beings, we don't realize that, but a lot of that happened and a lot of that came from um, some of the relationships that we've had in the past, you know? Um, and, uh, and unfortunately, that becomes ingrained in us, you know? If we see our parents fail, then, then we think fa failure is normal. You know, right. and some people react differently to that. Some people want to succeed as a result of that, and some people they just buy into that, and that's the story for the rest of their life. You know, I think we as human beings really need to understand that psychology is everything, mindset is everything, because mindset dictates the actions, and actions is what dictates what you have in life, basically. Right. But it all starts as a result of mindset. So I would say for the for the person that says, you know, I've got a business, but I, I've got a family. You know, one of my favorite quotes, and I, I post it every once in a while on Instagram is don't use your family as the excuse, use your family as a reason. Because somebody could sit here and say, you know what, I'd love to start a business but I have a family. Or they could say, I'd love to start a business and I'm gonna start it because of my family. It's it's the same thing. You just have that little it's just you just mm -hmm. gotta make the switch, you know? I call it the positive in everything. Wow. You gotta learn to see the positive in everything. In every situation, I was just on the phone with one of my coaching clients. And he said, you know what, I've had a rough three weeks, I had three deals fall apart, I lost $50,000, oh my God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I told him, listen to me, it's happening for a reason. Because when you become the entrepreneur that you want to become in the future, you're going to lose more than $50,000. There's other things that are gonna happen. Employees are gonna walk away, somebody's gonna sue you, people are gonna lie about you. All of that is just part of the game. If you can't handle this problem right now, you won't be able to ha handle the bigger problems that are coming ahead. And wow. that's what God does is I believe that, you know, based off of the size of your vision, he gives you certain circumstances and certain problems and certain situations to get you prepared for that vision, basically. That's amazing. It's interesting that you say, you know, $50,000 that he lost. My mentor, Jeff Harmon, he's from Silicon Valley. He's actually here too for the event. And he told me a story, he, sh he, he shot me a text one, he's like, hey Carlos, what's going on? I lost, I think it was well over a million dollars in sales, because he worked for IBM. Mm -hmm. um, he used to work for IBM. And I thought, he, but he was so excited about it, because they opened, at the time, I didn't understand this, but it opened so many doors for him, so many more opportunities, and yeah. it allowed him to do much more. And I just wanted to throw that out there, because it's just so crazy, Some, sometimes obstacles are the things that will get you there. You know, yeah. not, it's, I mean, let me, mm -hmm. it's not sometimes, it's... So, uh, let's pretend there's a chair right here. Okay. Okay, there's, there's two chairs. I call it the now you and the future you. The now you, the one sitting in this chair right now, thinks a certain way, responds a certain way, acts a certain way. It's, it's what makes you. The future you, if you really want to make it in business and if you really want to be successful, you have got to understand, cannot, absolutely cannot, think the way you think, respond the way you think, behave the way you think. It, there must be growth. And in order for there to be growth, there must be circumstances, there must be challenges, there must be obstacles, right? And that's why I tell people, I was live on Instagram the other day and my, my event, Relentless, um, last year we had 2,000 people there. This year we'll have 3,000 people there. Get out of here, wow. Oh yeah, That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, Where we'll is have, it gonna be? Uh, it'll be in Anaheim, California. Right. Uh, in oh yes, I saw that, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, Relentlessevent.com. But anyways, we had 2,000 people there last year. We'll have at least 3,000 there this year. And I asked them this question. I said, hey man, so uh, what's up, what's going on, how are you? Hey, my name is so-and-so, I do this type of business. I go, great, are you coming to Relentless? And he goes, you know what, I'm, I'm, I, I, I might, I'm considering it. I go, stop right there. I go, before you ask any question, I can tell you right now you're stuck. And he was like, and I can tell you the reason why you're stuck. The reason why you're stuck is because most people do not understand that the number one priority of an entrepreneur is to grow this. It's the number one priority. That means that on January 1st, when you lay out your calendar for the entire year, mm -hmm. and you plan what you're going to do with your time, guess what I do first? Seminar here, seminar there, seminar there. Coaching call there, 
coaching call there, coaching call there. I plan that before work. I plan it before family time. I plan it before vacation. Seminars and growing my mind comes first. Can I tell you why? Because if I grow that, my money grows, my wealth grows, my family time grows, everything else grows. What does 90% of the population? Uh, I'll think about the seminar. I don't know if I'll go. They have it asked backwards. And so what people need to realize is that building yourself and building your mind comes first. And then everything else will follow. What do most people do and what did we see our families do, so forth and so on? They, my mom would never go to a seminar. My dad go to a seminar? Are you crazy? No. But look at what happened to their life. They're the same today that they were 30 years ago. Nothing has changed. Wow. Let's talk about Relentless a little bit. I love this company that you have. Uh, and just because everybody's going to ask me, how did you meet him? How did you find out about him? Uh, about Danny? I'm just going to say a story here. Uh, I was trying to get an interview with Alice Rodriguez. And I saw somehow on Instagram, I don't remember how, he was talking at your event. So that got me interested in actually stalking you and finding out mm -hmm. about you. <laughs> so then I learned all these beautiful things about you and your, you know, your family and how you are on, on Instagram. It's all real. How did this event, how did you come up with this? this was this something that kind of like came along the way? I'll or, tell you how exactly how Yeah. So, um, when I opened this company, we, we, we have 400 agents. Last year we did 982 million in sales. This year we'll, we'll break a billion in sales for sure, no matter what. That's not revenue, that's sales, right? Um, when I started this company, I started it with one principle, and that was, if you work here, you're going to grow, you're going to be impacted, you're going to grow your mind, you're gonna grow your sales skills, you're gonna grow everything. You're, you're gonna become a business person. Well, the company grew, and as the years went by, the people within the company were growing. And essentially, the people within the company were the proof that what we teach works. The problem was, we were only teaching it to people here. And as a result of social media, people started hitting me up from everywhere, like, come and open up an, uh, open up an, uh, open up an office in New mm -hmm. York or Florida or, or uh, Texas or Arizona or Colorado or Chicago. And I thought to myself, I don't really want to open offices all over the place. So then I thought, you know what? Why don't we just make an event where what we teach here and we do every single day, wow. we'll just do it and open it up for the public. And the first year we had 500 people. The second year I bought Gary V. We had uh, 900 people. And then last year was the big one. We had 2,000 people. Yeah. Wow. And that was with Ed Milet. Yeah, we had Ed Milet. We had mm -hmm. Rob Dyrdek from MTV. We had Alex Rodriguez. Uh, we had... Um, I'm drawing a blank right now, but <laughs> Mimi, she's, uh, I, I, I'm drawing a blank, but um, she's, she was absolutely incredible, so yeah. Mel Robbins was there as well? Mel, no, Mel Robbins was at oh. my first event. Was okay, got event. it. I saw that too. That was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. But Danny, uh, let's close this off. Send us home. What are top two, two or three tips or principles that you would let us know to kind of like stay focused and get things done? Yeah, so I would say... Okay, in my book, I, 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 the name of the book is The Resilience Roadmap. It's a roadmap essentially to, to help you build a, a, an ideal business. It's the exact roadmap that I follow to, to build this company, right? And, you know, I just, I'll just go through the first three chapters of the book okay. because that's essentially the map right there. Step number one is you got to make a decision to live by faith or fear. When you say something like, I'd love to start a business, but I have a family, you're living by fear. And you're using your family as the excuse. So you've got to make a decision. And everybody watching and listening has to make a decision. You've got to make a decision as to the guiding principle in your life is going to be fear or faith. You, there is no both. You can't live in both. It's a decision that you absolutely have to make. And based off of that decision, everything else will follow, right? Chapter two is, Decide what you want. Now follow me here. If someone is living by fear, they're gonna have a very difficult time deciding exactly what they want. Right. Because their goals and dreams will be limited by the fear that they are experiencing. If somebody is living through faith, then they're gonna decide a much bigger want. Make sense? A much bigger vision. It's like when I decided to buy my mother a house at 21, that was pure faith. 
Because no one in my family at the time owned a house. No one in my family had done it before. I didn't even know how to do it. I just threw it out there and I said I was going to do it type of deal. Step number three, you make a plan. And you can't make a plan if you don't first decide what you want. And you can't decide what you want if you first don't decide to live by faith and not fear. So every chapter builds on each other. Right? So if people are ever, ever having a problem with this process, you can go back to the book and you can take a look and you can see, oh, that's where I'm lacking and read that chapter and it'll give you nuggets on how to fix it. Right? Wow. And then step number four is take massive inspired action. The problem today is that most people are so focused on what do I have to do, which is chapter four, but you first got to get the first three chapters in order and in alignment in order to know what to do and how to do it. Actions are driven by vision. right? And vision is driven by faith. And that's why the first chapter is written the same, the, the way that it's written. So live by faith, not fear. Decide exactly what you want. Make a plan to achieve it. And then take massive inspired action. That, wow. That's what I would leave everybody with. That's amazing. Yeah. Because uh, I totally agree because when I first started, I didn't know everything. Right. But I took the, the action. And if I were to tell you a year ago that I would be interviewing Danny. I'll be honest with you, I don't know how the hell you ended up here, just to be perfectly honest with you. Because nobody gets, nobody gets in person, I just don't allow it. So how you ended up here, I give you kudos and I give you credit. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Well, I, I honestly do. I just got to say, just keep bothering, keep asking, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and adding value. There you adding go. Adding value. There you go. I'd be willing to drive 100 miles. There you go. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. No, honestly. Honestly. <laughs> Danny, thank you for your time. Thank you, man. This I was amazing. It. Yes. So inspiring. Yes. Uh, thank you, baby. I know you're right behind yes, the camera, but you. she She's came right along right. the way. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Danny, um, where do we follow you? Where do we go? Look, I have the most fun on Instagram. Okay. So I would say on Instagram, just go look up Danny Morell, D-A-N-N-Y-M-O-R-E-L. Follow me there. I, I, I honestly, I, we put up so much value that it's, he does. it's like being a part of a freaking coaching university just by following yeah. me on Instagram. And then our podcast, you can just on your favorite podcast app, go to Danny Morell. And then if you want to get the book, just go to Amazon and just type in my name and the book will pop up. That's it. I'll put everything in the description below. Awesome. Danny, thank you so much. You got it, my friend. Take care. Okay. Okay.